Hey guys and welcome to our new video. Today we're going to be talking about the group 1 elements, their physical and chemical properties. And actually the group 1, the name group 1 elements, they are also called the alkaline. And those ones here, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium are the alkali or the group 1 elements. And here we have picked out a small mnemonic with little naughty kids, Rob called fries which should be uh, helpful uh, so you can learn the names of all the elements in the first group they're not really so hard and uh, i'm pretty sure it's gonna be that's gonna be the easiest part of this lesson today uh, we have already talked about all of those trends which are specific for the periodic table but we're gonna brush up on our uh, knowledge from la our last video and I'm gonna put a link somewhere around here so you can check it out if you don't remember. Uh, now, atomic radius decreases when we're going down, it increases when we're going down, but it decreases when we're going from the left to the right. Non-metallic character increases when we go towards the top right corner and it decreases when we're going to the bottom left corner of the periodic table. Electron affinity, ionization energy, and electronegativity all increase when we're going from the left to the right. And the same trend follows for when it's going from the top to the bottom of the periodic table. And as we can see, uh, the group 1 elements are going to be here in uh, this part of the periodic table. They're gonna have relatively really big atomic radius compared to all of the to the elements that are after them in each period. And uh, francium is gonna have the biggest atomic radius of all the elements. Now, if he's, uh, this element is gonna also have the most metallic character. They have the most metallic character. They have the least ionization energy, really high electron affinity, electronegativity, and uh, the lowest non-metallic character. And now we're going to be talking about the electron configuration of the elements uh, in group 1a or the alkali elements. As we already stated, they all have one electron in the outer shell and low electron affinity. Uh, because they have only one electron, they're going to be giving it off somewhere, like really easily. And they're going to be forming ions with one positive charge, so-called cations. And... Uh, because it's easier to give off one electron than two or three or four if uh, there are cases if there are cases like that but uh, it's uh, they're very reactive and their activity is going to be increasing down the group why well because the atomic radius is going to be increasing the outer shell is going to be farther away from the nucleus and the uh, effective nuclear charge is not going to be pulling on the electron so much and just the distance between the nuclear nu nucleus and the um, outer shell is going to be greater. So it's going to be easier to give up the electron. And now we see here at the beginning of the group there is this element which is hydrogen. It is part of this group only because it has one, elect uh, one electron, one proton. It's uh, not part of the alkali elements. It doesn't have the same properties. Uh, and uh, now... Uh, we can compare the first group and second group, the way group. It's uh, they are going to be less reactive because they have to lose two electrons from the outer shell, and for each electron, they're going to have a different ionization energy. So it's going to require more energy to give off those electrons than for the first uh, first A group. Now uh, properties of group one metals. All of them are soft to cut, as you can see here. Uh, they're shiny, uh, like most metals, but they quickly tarnish in air because they react, they oxidize. Uh, they react really vigorously with the air and water. And that, is, as we can see, reacts very easily with air, water and elements such as chlorine. And uh, that exactly is why they're stored in oil. So they do not react with... Uh, air in general or compounds in the air they have very low melting points compared with most metals and their density uh, compared with most metals is very low and like you can see those elements they can even float on flow on uh, float on water uh, 
Uh, now, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, now we're gonna be talking about uh, those so called flame reactions or reactions we can distinguish uh, different alkali metals from one another or from other compounds. Usually, they're really useful when we're trying to understand what type of, uh, and for example, like what uh, solute we have, and usually we just need like this, uh, usually use the salts. And we burn them and that's when we get like different uh, oxides like for example lithium sodium uh, potassium oxide and they're all solids now but this happens only when uh, in the presence of oxygen let's say because whenever we burn something we need oxygen now um, lithium has a reddish uh, flame sodium is for sodium is orange yellow for potassium, it's a lilac or a purple, and uh, for the other elements in the group, we have now for rubidium is usually a dark red, which I have not put here, and for cesium it might be a blue, li like light blue. Uh, and they're as I already said, they're all really useful for identifying the metals. And now, whenever there is a flame reaction, we always get an oxide, as we said, and this oxide is solid and it is white. And now we're gonna look at our chemistry, like a specific demonstration, an experiment, or how sodium and other alkali metals react with water. Well, they all react vigorously when placed in water, and most of them float, all of those here float, because they have a lower density, as we already stated. And it's going to be moving around vigorously. That is because it produces heat. It might release sparks, which is specific for like elements that are highly reactive, like potassium. Uh, here, because it's sodium, it's going to burn with a yellow flame. And it's going to release hydrogen gas, which all of the elements, when they react with water, release hydrogen. Uh, because of the heat, the metal usually melts and it forms a sphere. The bubbles of gas are released and the metal usually disappears. Um, now sometimes because of the intense heat and the release of hydrogen gas there might be like they might lead to burns if you're not wearing the specific equipment uh, for the experiment but that's not what like what you're gonna be asked on the exam. Uh, you only need to use a tiny bit of metal in a large heat safe container of water. Use specific goggles and everything that like is required for this experiment and of course the reaction is going to be more dramatic in hot water uh, then uh, now here we have the equations how they're supposed to look like and um, we can see that from the solid form that all of the elements start they go in the liquid form with the hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and potassium hydroxide. And of course, uh, hydrogen is released in gases form, as we already stated. And uh, all of those can be found as, wait, let me make that in the solution. And due to those ones, like those anions, we can actually determine the alkali, uh, that the solution is alkaline or basic. Uh, here we can, um, this is like an example how the metals are actively burning in chlorine to form a white solid, which is, we all know it, it's salt with sodium. Uh, it is uh, because they're all very reactive metals and chlorine is a reactive non-metal they just attract each other the chlorine wants their protons uh, to get to, to the same conf electron configuration electron configuration as the uh, noble gases and the, the metals are like okay we love it we love to see it we're gonna give it and uh, lithium plus chlorine lithium chloride sodium plus chlorine, sodium chloride, and potassium plus chlorine, potassium chloride. Uh, and here we should always remember that like we should equalize because here we have one mole and here one mole, but here we have two atoms and here we have only one, so we're gonna put one here, but because then we increase the lithium. Uh, 
uh, in the lithium chloride in general the whole solid we're gonna have to increase it here as well don't forget to do that because that's really important or like your equation is not going to be correct and now we're gonna talk a little bit about the biological importance and also the importance in the food industry for sodium um, sodium obviously is a compound of many food products for instance common salt here we can see iodized salt because, uh, where instead of uh, chlorine we have uh, iodine which is a usually um, used so that we can get the daily minimum the daily minimum like dosage of iodine so we don't have any thyroid problems uh, also sodium now it's important for maintaining the balance of the physical fluid system it's also required for nerve and muscle or in general like any excitable excitable tissue due to the essential role in the action potential here we can see the resting potential and the action potential uh, also um, too much sodium as everything like when there is too much uh, it can damage our kidneys and increase the chance of high blood pressure uh, because it's gonna change the osmotic pressure in the different like uh, bodily fluids and lead to different problems furthermore uh, contact of uh, sodium with water so like including perspiration which actually is another name uh, is another term for sweat uh, can cause the formation of sodium hydroxide fumes which are highly irritating to the skin eyes nose and throat uh, it can cause sneezing coughing very severe exposures may, may lead in uh, difficulty breathing coughing and sometimes even can go bronchitis now uh, contact to the skin uh, of uh, sodium or in general can cause may cause itching tingling thermal and caustic burns and permanent damage now we already said why because we get the sodium hydroxide and the reaction is really reactive as we already stated and also if you don't know what caustic burns it's chemical burns that's another name for it and contact with the eyes may result in permanent damage and loss of sight and here we have uh, some simple questions uh, that you can solve uh, alone this time i'm not gonna uh, be helping you through them i am pretty confident that you are perfectly capable of doing them on your own uh, you should pause the video take a screenshot and if you feel like it or if you just want to uh, discuss the answers that you have um, figured out or like you just want some help you can always like write it down in the comment section so like other fellow students which are going to be taking the IMAT can help you or you can help them so there is like some sort of um, community you're not alone and uh, we would like to thank you again for watching this video and supporting us through likes and subscribes and of course i would like to remind you to hit uh, the like button subscribe and of course the bell if you want to be the first one to see our vids uh, we're really grateful for all of your support and uh, we're gonna see you next time until then good luck studying